In today's video, we will learn the Jacobi's theorem for determinants. So before we move on to the Jacobi's theorem, there are certain things that we need to keep in mind. The first one is that the product of the elements of a row or column with the corresponding cofactors of another row or column is zero. That is, suppose we are given the determinant. That is, suppose we are given this determinant uh, a11, a12, a21, a22 and this is the determinant of its cofactors. I hope you know what cofactors are. So a capital A11, A12, A21, A22. So the product of any row or column with another row or column of the cofactors is equal to 0. That is A11 into A21 plus A12 into A22 equals to 0. This is what I have done row wise. Now column wise also this is applicable. Say A11 into A12 plus A21 into A22 equals to 0. However, the product of the elements of a row with the of a row or a column with the corresponding cofactors of the same row or column gives the value of the determinant. That is a11 into capital A11 plus A12 into capital A12 gives the value of the determinant. This is applicable column wise as well. That is A11 into A11 plus A21 into A21 also gives the value of the determinant. So these two things are very important before we proceed with Jacobi's theorem. The statement of Jacobi's theorem is that let delta be a determinant and delta dash be the determinant of its cofactors. Then delta into delta dash is equal to delta to the power n. So let us prove this. Firstly, let us take a determinant of the nth order that is a11, a12 till a1n a21, a22 till a2n. Similarly, we proceed and we get a n1, a n2 till a n n. This is the nth order determinant that we are taking. Suppose this is equal to delta. Now, what is our delta dash? Our delta dash is The determinant of the corresponding cofactors that is it is a11 a12 till a1n a21 a22 till a2n similarly proceeding we get an1 an2 ann so what does the theorem state that delta into delta dash is equal to delta n so let us uh, begin with the left hand side. Uh, in the left hand side we are basically multiplying these two determinants. So let us do that. So here we are multiplying these two determinants by row wise multiplication. Row wise multiplication means that you first multiply this row with the first row and you get the first uh, first point of the determinant then you multiply this row with the second row of the cofactors and you get the second point that is the a12 of your determinant then you keep on multiplying this row with corresponding rows of the cofactor determinant and you get the multiplication let us see how it is done for more clarity And a11 into a11 plus a12 into a12 till a1n into a1n. Now we multiply this row with the second row. So we get a11 into a21 plus a12 
into a to 2 till a 1 n into a 2 n. This is the sec this is the second element of your of the first row of your determinant. Similarly, if we proceed till n terms, the last element of that is the first row and the nth column, that element of our determinant is going to be, I'm going to write it below since there's a lack of space here, uh, it's going to be a11, a n1 plus a12, a n2 till a1 n into a n n. Okay? Similarly, we will now proceed with the second row of our first determinant. That is, we will get a21 into a11 plus a22 into a12 till a2n into a1n. The second, uh, the second row and second column uh, element will be a21. Here we will multiply this row and the second row of the cofactor determinant and we get into a21 plus a22 into a22 plus a2n into a2n. Similarly, the nth column of and the second rows element will be, I am again writing it here, it's going to be a21 a uh, n1 plus a22 a n2 till a 2n a n n. Now uh, we will proceed with this till n terms and the last row of our determinant will be a n1 into a11 plus a n2 into a12 till a n n into a n n. Similarly, the nth row and the second column element will be a n1 into a21 plus a n2 into a22 plus and this way it will continue till a n n a 2 n and the last one will be a n 1 into a n 1 plus a n 2 into a n 2 plus a n n to a n n Just add a dots here ok so quite a long expansion so what are we basically doing? We are multiplying each row with the corresponding row of the second determinant. It's this into this plus, uh, sorry, it's this into this. The second element is then this into this. The third element will be, and sorry, the n nth element is this into this. For the second row, we begin with the second row of the first determinant and the corresponding rows of the second determinant and so on. So, what are we getting out of this? Now if you remember what we did just in the beginning, the product of the elements of a row and corresponding cofactor of a row or column and corresponding cofactors of the same row or column gives the value of the determinant. So where is that uh, rule applicable in this determinant? If you see the first row and first column, these are product product of elements and the corresponding cofactors. And this is constant throughout the diagonal of the determinant. You see here again and here again. Uh, uh, I'm sorry that's the third one is not here but if you if you check the determinant this is applicable throughout the diagonal. So what do we get? This can be written as a determinant okay and what is the second theorem we did? That the product of the elements of a particular row and the cofactors 
of um, another row or column gives the value 0. So that is applicable on all other points besides the diagonal points. Here you see first row, first column, second row, first column. You see and here again second row, first column, first row, first column. So we are basically multiplying the elements with the cofactors of another row. And so these, all these values besides the diagonal values are supposed to give us a 0. So what is the final determinant that we get? It's a determinant into 0 into till n terms we get a 0. Here the second one will be this into a till n terms we again get a 0. The third and similarly if we proceed we will get 0, 0 and the final one will be another a determinant. Okay, so now you see why we introduced those two rules in the very beginning. Now, we also know that the value of a diagonal, so we are basically getting a diagonal determinant here. And we know that the value of a diagonal determinant is the product of its diagonal elements. Because all the other elements are basically nothing but zero. So, uh, what, is our, uh, what is the final answer that we get? It's a determinant into a determinant till a till uh, till n terms right so what is our a determinant it's, it's basically delta right so we are getting delta into delta n terms which is what is equal to delta to the power n right so what have we proved what was our LHS delta into delta dash and we have proved it to be equal to delta to the power n so this is the proof of the Jacobi's theorem. If you have any other any doubts, you can write them to me in the comment section and I will surely reply to them. Thank you.